Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire are very brutal speedruns. In fact, it was once calculated to be about a 3% chance to finish a single run at the top level. But after 10 years of folks painstakingly resetting speedruns, someone eventually asked, what would a perfect Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire speedrun actually look like? Well, exactly like this. This is what's called a TAS. A TAS is essentially a speedrun that a human formulates through an emulator's tools, such as slowdown and save states to assist in creating a theoretically perfect speedrun without the use of cheats or being held back by the limitations of human anatomy. When compared to the human speedrun of Ruby and Sapphire that's beaten in one hour, 56 minutes and 50 seconds, the Ruby and Sapphire TAS obliterates this time by about 20 plus minutes. Even when you take glitch speedruns into account, but as a disclaimer, a task isn't really meant to be compared to a human since it's more of a showcase of what perfection looks like in a speedrun. But looking at perfection is quite fascinating when you see what has to be done to reach the goal of being perfect. And speaking of perfect, winter is the perfect time to cozy up at home with a mobile game you can really get sucked into. In this game, there are over 800 incredible champions, ranging from lizard-like creatures to elves, orcs, dwarves, and demons, each looking pretty cool. I know you've probably heard about this game before, but have you actually sat down and tried it for yourself? Because Raid Shadow Legends is the type of game that you can get lost in for hours. If you're a beginner to this game, I can't recommend enough the combination of the champions Whirlin Frost King and Sir Nicholas. Whirlin Frost King is fantastic at keeping you alive by decreasing the enemy's crit damage and accuracy, all while providing a bunch of supportive buffs to skyrocket your damage. While the champion Sir Nicholas is an incredibly powerful HP-based champion. Not only does he have a ton of skill multipliers that let him hit hard, but he also has a sick secondary skill that can shield you even further from damage. Combine these two together and you'll have an incredibly hard to kill duo. And have I mentioned the holiday events come up like the Cursed City update and Christmas storyline. The Cursed City is one of Raid's biggest features since the Doom Tower, with 100 stages to complete, including stages where you'll need to take down two of Raid's bosses at the same time. While the Christmas event has you follow the champion Sir Nicholas through a festive story that comes with the chance to win both in-game and real-life prizes ranging from epic and legend champions to Amazon gift cards. Just head to RaidXmas.com to participate in the Christmas event. And if you've yet to download the game, download my link in the description or scan my QR to join with some insane bonuses only available through my link, which includes two epic champions, Light Sworn, who's good at keeping your team alive, and Juliana after reaching level 15. She is a fantastic boss killer and a must have for anyone really wanting to dive into this game. And while you're at it, be sure to join my clan, the Coffee Crew, and we'll be legends together. Just hit my link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. When it comes to being perfect in a Pokemon speedrun, perfection is achieved through the best RNG possible. And I imagine with that statement, you might be wondering what that even looks like. A few good examples for Pokemon games includes critical hitting anytime you need to, freezing your opponent so they don't get a turn, or even using the move metronome to access a move that you don't normally have to KO a Pokemon that won't die otherwise. And when it comes to Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, the magic starts the moment the task sets up certain options upon entering a new game file. These options and task sets before entering the new game are extremely important for not only saving time, but are also good for controlling RNG. Normally, a human speedrunner would never dream of having their tech set to slow since it costs no time at all to change it. But a task that wants to control every aspect of RNG does, since controlling the speed that your tech scrolls by at is one of the easiest ways to get the RNG a task is looking for. This is all thanks to how the RNG in Pokemon games is programmed. Because the RNG in GBA games is not actually random. While it does try to be random, it's actually programmed to be in a constant sequence of patterns. For example, pressing A to select a move at 6 seconds instead of 5 seconds might result in a move critting at 5 seconds or missing at 6 seconds. And because the person formulating the task can see the RNG, they'll always be able to pick the 
perfect option for any situation. As for the choice of girl character, Mei is chosen in order to make the rival fights much easier, while Mudkip is just the best starter Pokemon for clearing almost every part of the main story. It even gets access to every Water HM plus Strength as a bonus for picking it, with little to no time loss compared to catching something else. But just for you Trico and Torchic fans, the task won't actually need to keep Mudkip for very long anyways, since there's one Pokemon that clears everything after Roxanne faster than it can. Before we catch it, however, the task needs to catch a wild Zigzagoon, enter the Petalburg Pokemon Center, grab the Quick Claw item in Rustboro, and get through the Pokemon catching tutorial by having Wally KO his Ralts instead of catching it. This occurrence is a 1 in 8,574 chance to happen, which is a bit higher than a full odd shiny. And the reason the odds are so high for this to happen is because of the insane amount of things that need to line up. First off, the only thing that's actually programmed to be set in stone are the moves that Zigzagoon and Ralts can do. Zigzagoon will always tackle twice, while Ralts will always spam Growl. Critical hits are also turned off on this tutorial, so unfortunately, Zigzagoon needs an incredibly high attack IV, while Ralts needs a minus defense nature with a low IV in both defense and HP. On top of these crazy stat requirements, Zigzagoon also needs to hit the highest possible damage roll on both tackles due to the growl from Ralts. Needless to say, this is something that a human would never go for, but if we want to achieve perfection, it is absolutely a requirement for a task. And the crazy thing is, it only saves about 30 seconds compared to just watching the tutorial normally. As for the Quick Claw and Zigzagoon catch, Quick Claw is an item that gives you a 20% chance of going before your opponent, while Zigzagoon is an item producing machine thanks to its ability Pickup. When Pickup was first introduced with Gen 3's brand new ability system in Ruby and Sapphire, the tables for which item you could receive were not very balanced at all. This was later nerfed in Pokemon Emerald by forcing you to level up your Zigzagoon to access those crazy items. But since this is the original Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, the task can abuse these pickups to give us free items like rare candies each time we complete a battle. Now I know this sounds incredibly broken since you could just overlevel to the point where this becomes a super boring speedrun. But it turns out that over leveling like that is actually slower with how much time grabbing rare candies after every battle takes each time you do it. The candies we do grab will instead be used to skip extra fights that would be required to reach beneficial levels. For example, Mudkip would need to fight an incredibly slow Geodude trainer in Roxanne's gym with the move Mudslap to gain access to Water Gun in time for Roxanne. But instead, the task can just use the Wally catching tutorial and the Aqua Magma Grunt fights to obtain two rare candies. Unfortunately for this mystery Pokemon we've yet to catch, it's unable to handle Roxanne's battle efficiently due to its lack of coverage against Rock-type Pokemon. So, Mudkip will just need to beat her through the power of its ability, Torrent. The battle against Roxanne will start by sending out Mudkip equipped with Quick Claw. Roxanne's Geodudes will not be a problem, but her Nose Pass is one of the most annoying Pokemon in the game to KO due to it holding a berry and Roxanne having a ton of potions. But luckily for the task, it has the option to be slower or faster than Nose Pass since this particular Mudkip has a really bad speed set. So to beat her perfectly, the task will force Mudkip to be slower than Nose Pass to take just enough damage to be in one third of its HP or lower. This much HP will then activate Torrent, boosting Mud Kip's water moves just high enough to not trigger Nose Pass's berry only if the first water gun is not a critical hit. Then with just the right timing, the task can activate Mudkip's Quick Claw and crit Roxanne's Nose Pass on the exact same turn. These two occurrences happening at the exact same time have less than a 1% chance of happening, and even though the odds are so low, it won't really be a problem for the task to force constantly thanks to the methods the game freak used to seed RNG. And with Roxanne finally defeated, it's time we grab the Pokemon that'll be taking over the rest of the speedrun, Talo. For those that don't understand the power of Talo, it has to do with its normal flying typing and ability. Its ability Guts boosts the attacks out of a Pokemon inflicted with a status condition by about 50%. When paired with a move called Facade, the move Facade will reach a base power of about 315 when you add every single boost together, which is absolutely ridiculous considering it has almost zero zero drawbacks to using it. The only problem with Facade is that it's locked behind the 5th gym badge, 
damage. And in order to get this crazy boost, you need a Pokemon to status you, which a lot of the time actually wastes more time than it saves. So in order to efficiently keep Guts activated the entire game, the task will force a Shroomish with the Effect Spore ability to spawn in Petalburg Woods as we head towards Duford. The reason Paralysis is chosen is because it's the best status for a task since Quick Claw easily counteracts the bad effects of Paralysis, letting Taylo attack Earth every single time it needs to while also avoiding being fully paralyzed throughout the entire game. Any other status would either immobilize Taylo or lose too much time to the damage caused by other status conditions. And as we enter Duford Town, the task will get access to more rare candies with Zigzagoon, spawn an Abra to teleport around Hoenn with, then talk to Steven Stone to be able to leave Duford. Human speedrunners used to delay the Brawly fight entirely since the fight was considered way too hard. But with two out of three rare candies from Zigzagoon, the task can get Taylo to learn the move Wing Attack right before Brawly. Wing Attack will be a requirement for his lead Machop, since Peck unfortunately won't cut it even with a Guts boosted critical hit. However, his second Pokemon Makuhita will die to a Peck, saving a total of 7 frames due to how many letters Wing Attack is compared to Peck, earning us our second badge. On our way through to the next gym, more problems are presented to us with solutions that the task solves in incredibly fast ways. The rival will not be one of these problems since he chose Trico like a fool in an attempt to counter Mudkip. But even though this fight is an easy one, it's actually incredibly important for Zigzagoon's pickup ability and not for the usual rare candy. It'll be one of the other items available on the pickup table, the King's Rock. King's Rock is an item that gives you a 10% chance to flinch on every single one of your moves while the item is equipped. This will be incredibly important for the gym leader Watson and his electric and steel type Pokemon. Mudkip's evolution Marshomp is usually the best option here, but evolving a Pokemon that isn't Taylo this far into the game is much slower than what the task is about to do. Before the fight begins, the experience on Taylo will line up perfectly for it to evolve into Swellow, giving it a much needed boost to its power. The task will then equip the King's Rock, then enter the battle immediately. As the battle begins, the task will start spamming X attacks to increase Swellow's attack. While this might seem dangerous in front of an electric type Pokemon, it's actually incredibly safe for a task since Magnemite likes to spam Supersonic, and anything with an accuracy less than 100 can be forced to miss at a moment's notice, giving us plenty of room to set up to plus two. But now the problem becomes, how do you outspeed anything without the Quick Claw if your status is Paralysis? Well, luckily for the task, Swellow's Quick Attack has increased priority and enough power to KO Magnemite with a crit, Voltorb without a crit, and Magneton with a double critical hit flinch, all thanks to King's Rock, earning us our third badge. Shortly after the battle, Quick Claw will be re-equipped to abuse for the rest of the game, which also makes for the perfect opportunity to teach Rock Smash to one of our Pokemon. Normally, this would be another section where I make zero mention of the movement going to the next location, but the travel to Fall Arbor is the perfect place to show just how the task gets through the entire game with zero repels while still getting zero encounters. While biking up to Fiery Path, there will be times where the task seemingly crashes into a wall, but this crash is perfectly timed in order to force spinners to face a certain direction as well as the fastest way to avoid encounters without using repels. Because as I mentioned before, RNG isn't a constant sequence, and if you stop during that sequence, you might just be able to avoid an encounter. And at this point, we're about one gym badge away from obtaining the holy grail of all TMs. So it's time to obliterate Maxi and his goons through a couple of crits, then on to Flannery who surprisingly won't need the use of a single X attack to beat her. The problem on her team is her Torque Hole, since it's a very bulky and powerful Pokemon. But luckily, the only move that can KO Swellow is Overheat, which just so happens to miss at the perfect time, keeping our Swellow alive and leaving it open be two shot by our Danger Bird, earning us our fourth badge. With the Lava Ridge Gym complete, it's time to make it all the way back to Petalburg for the next gym, which is normally an incredibly long journey. But if you remember at the beginning of this video, I mentioned entering a Pokemon Center in Petalburg, which changes the journey to the next gym from this to this. 
all thanks to Abra's teleport. Clearing the trainers in the gym are pretty much as simple as clicking a button until we get to Norman. Norman himself, however, is a bit scary with this slacking, but the ability Truon ends up being the saving grace we need to get set up. Because as it turns out, Swellow can somehow miraculously survive one single hit for a free plus two setup thanks to Truon giving us zero issues from the rest of Norman's party and finally earning us the holy grail of all TMs, Bacati. With the holy grail facade and surf in our hands, we can destroy most of the battles left in the game without having two critical hits to one-shot our opponents. The flying type gym leader Winona will be the first victim of this facade fatality, giving us access to fly and our final coverage move Steel Wing once she's defeated. The only Pokemon typing that will resist our moves from this point forward will be the Steel type itself meaning the infamously hard Tate and Liza won't be a problem, and neither will the evil villains, Final Gym, a Wally battle, or any of the Elite Four members. This leaves the last bastion of hope to save Pokemon Ruby from Swellow's Wrath, the champion himself, Steven Stone. The most notable Pokemon on his team are these three Steel types, but thanks to his lead being Skarmory, the task can force Steel Wing to miss just enough to set up to plus two. This gives Swellow just enough attack to one-shot four out of six of his Pokemon. Agron, however, is a problem that can't be solved completely by crits. But luckily, the inaccurate move Thunder is his move of choice, giving the task an easy miss to be able to land two critical hit steel wings. Then finally, it's time for Steven Stone's ace Pokemon, Metagross who easily dies to a resisted facade critical hit, wrapping up the perfect Pokemon Sapphire speedrun in classic TAS fashion. If you enjoy runs like this, definitely check out the creators of this TAS, and don't forget to use my Raid Shadow Legends link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses for new players with an epic champion.